I'd like to start off today with the game Two Truths and a Lie. If you've never played before, here's how it works. I will say three statements about myself, two which are true and one which is a lie. You have to guess which one is the lie. The first, I play a violin. Second, I study forensics at Murdoch University. And third, I'm 16 years old. I hope you chose the first option because I've never played violin before in my life. I'm obviously a cellist. <laughs> my name's Liliana Nichols, I'm 16 years old, and I'm in my second year of a Bachelor of Forensic Biology and Toxicology and with a second major in Criminology at Murdoch University. The last 12 months of my life have been what could only be described as a choose-your-own-adventure novel, as I have navigated my way out of a traditional educational learning style to starting university at 15. The very first thing you need to understand about me is that I am a science nerd, and I can't remember a time in my life where science hasn't been a major focus. I had science-themed birthday parties and every chemistry kit you can imagine. <laughs> and I even somehow convinced my mum to let me dissect eyeballs, which, as you can see, she was thrilled about. Last year, in February 2020, I started Year 11. I was all set to spend two years studying to achieve my dream of going to uni and completing my Year 12 Certificate of Education. And I was thrilled at the prospect of 50% of my timetable being science and graduating with the people I had been at school with for 13 years. So you may be wondering why I decided to change the course of my trajectory. So to, so to explain, let's jump back a few chapters and choices and bear with me as I go through a mini-autobiography of the last seven years just so you get the context of the kind of experiences I've been immersed in. And listen for the three themes running concurrently. The first being my love of science and desire to be immersed in it. The second, opportunities I've had to develop networks of people through community involvement. And third, changing your environment, the people you surround yourself with, and the things you involve yourself in to make you happy. Now, let's start with 10-year-old Lily. My first experience of being part of a group focused on personal achievement and community development was being a part of the City of Mandurah's Junior Council program, a year-long program in which I was with other people at the end of my primary school education. 12-year-old Lily was lucky enough to be part of the Mandurah based Youth on Leadership program, a one-week camp followed by fortnightly development meetings. The camp is designed to be challenging, to push you out of your comfort zone and challenge your thoughts. In a session run by Brain Ambulance, we explored what our under-the-table worries were, the things that were holding us back from being happy, and the relationships we had with other people and how that was impacting us in a positive and negative way. I could clearly see that there were friendships in my life that didn't make me happy. They were hard work, mentally draining, they made me anxious and, according to my family, irritable. It was clear that I had to make some changes. Now, it wasn't easy, as you can't just rock up at school one day and be like, hey, I don't want to be your friend anymore and it was something I struggled with over the next few years. 14-year-old Lily, in her third year on camp, met Charlie Jones, who was the program coordinator for Peel Bright Minds and has been influential in developing my science communication skills. Through Charlie, I heard about the ConocoPhillips Science Experience, a week-long camp I attended at the end of Year 9. The camp taught me many things about science and myself. The greatest of which is that there is a network of young people like me who are passionate about science. I'd finally found my people. One of the things I was super excited about going into the camp was the opportunity to develop hands-on learning with activities such as DNA extraction and facial reconstruction. 15-year-old Lily decided it would be a great idea to wake up at 5 in the morning so she could complete work experience at the Alcoa Pinjara Alumina Refinery Lab. I completed a five-day placement where I got to learn about lots of cool science things, like learning how to use pipettes and spectrophotometers and all sorts of other scientific equipment. Working in this lab confirmed my love of all things science and my desire to work in a lab. I started searching through the piles of university handbooks I'd been collecting and found an undergraduate degree at forensics, in forensics at Murdoch University. I began mapping out what Year 12 subjects I would need to complete and what university entrance scores I would need to achieve. I was all set to spend two years studying to achieve my dream of getting into uni. Now, it may sound as if my life were a breeze, and there was so much of it that I had created that was, but I still struggled with the fact of not having the friendships outside of school that were as great as the ones I developed in other areas of my life. There were two main areas that I struggled with. The first is that I was the person my friends came to when things were not going well. 
I was the first person they came to when they had taken an overdose or tried to walk out in front of a bus. I was the first person they came to when things weren't going well at home or they didn't know how to come out to their family. I was the first person they came to for help with homeworks and assignment and study. The only thing was that if I needed someone to share or celebrate or commiserate or to help me, suddenly they were too busy to help me or hang out with me. The second was a much deeper issue that started when our school uniform policy changed to allow girls to wear pants rather than a kilt-like skirt and tights. Now, I'm not the most elegant, ladylike type person, so tights weren't my best friend. But what started as me choosing to be more comfortable and wear pants rather than a skirt, over three years turned into a damaging case of social bullying regarding my sexual orientation and gender and impacting my mental health. It started off with simple comments like, I didn't know girls could wear pants, or you're a girl, why are you wearing pants? But that quickly grew to, you're wearing pants, you must be transgender, or at least gay. The worst part about it is that the worst offenders were the people I considered to be my closest friends, who had shared their struggles with anxiety and identity with me, and who I would never make fun of for their choices. Their comments led to other people in my cohort thinking that I was gay, bisexual or transgender, something I had never stated, and I began to see random comments in class or people I'd never spoken to me, messaging me over social media, asking me how I came out to my parents. It was clear that I needed to remove myself from these toxic, pe toxic people, but when I started to do that, I had to defend those choices too, and I was soon labelled as bitchy and irrational or sensitive. I knew I needed to remove myself from the environment that I was in, but I didn't know how to navigate my way out of it. It was clear that where I really wanted to be was at university, studying what I really loved. I knew there were alternate pathways into university, but I didn't know if I could leave school to pursue them, or if my parents would be on board with that. And it was what happened next that made me determined to make a big change. I had seen firsthand how dramatically life changed for my younger brother, just through the simple change of his school environment. During primary school, he was systematically bullied and left unsupported. He was so miserable to the point he thought he would be better off if he wasn't around. He was 10. My parents took him to a counsellor who suggested that they move schools because he needed a fresh canvas and a more supportive environment. The change that occurred for him was almost instantaneous. Moving him from the toxic environment to an alternative learning program where he was supported, encouraged and seen for the really great kid that he is was enough proof for me that I needed to take some risks if I was going to make some real changes. I needed to know that I could wake up in the morning and if I felt like wearing a dress and pretty makeup, that is part of who I am and has no bearing on my sexual orientation or gender. And if I wake up and feel like wearing a flannel t-shirt and jeans, that is also part of who I am and had no bearing on my sexuality or gender. What defines me is who I say I am and not other people's need to put me in a box. What defines you is who you say you are and not other people's need to put you in a box. All these seeds had been sown in my mind and started interconnecting and forming a plan. I casually asked my mum one day, if I can get into uni early, could I leave school? To which she replied, figure out how you can make that work and come back to me. This was no mean feat. In a busy household where mum works full time, dad works long hours, two younger siblings and older siblings merging in and out. Mum had taught us that before we ask for anything, you have to get all the information. Otherwise, we pretty much knew the answer was going to be no. So, 15-year-old Lily did all her research and came back to her parents with a plan. While still at school, I enrolled in my Certificate 4 for Preparation and Health and Nursing Studies. I began spending my days at school and then coming home to complete my Certificate course online. The course was completely maths and science based, practical and heaps of fun. I finished this and made an appointment with the student services at Murdoch University to see how I could enrol. But they told me that what I had done wasn't enough, as I had done nothing to prove my English competencies. They did tell me that I could complete two online university units through Open Universities Australia, then I could enrol. Back to the internet I went. I searched and found two, degree, two units that were part of the degree I wanted to complete, only to find out that I couldn't enrol until I was 16, and I wouldn't finish them until after July which means I'd still have to wait until 2021 to start uni. So I did what I was taught to do best, get all the information before accepting no as an answer. I pushed through this roadblock more determined than ever to achieve my goal. 
Turning the page, we meet my hero, Josh. I decided to ring to see if there was anything I could do to start my units early, and lucky for me, Josh answered the phone. He listened to my story, heard my passion, and found a way to force the automated system to accept my enrolment. I might not have been on campus, but I had started uni. This was the last piece I needed to be able to leave school. But you know when you're reading a choose your own adventure novel and you stick your finger in the page, just in case you don't like your choice, you can come back? I had made my choice, I was completing my units, but I still had my doubts about the English competencies. Back to the internet it was. I searched everything, and finally, in the deepest part of the internet, just before you hit the dark web, I found what I needed. I could complete the written English section of the special tertiary admissions test if I had completed my certificate four. Because of COVID, there are extra dates, and I could sit the test in two weeks' time. Now, everything hung in the balance until I got my results back. I checked the mailbox every day until I finally got my letter with my results. I had passed. It was the last piece I needed for my application, and I sent it off that day. A little under two weeks later, I opened my emails and received news that changed my life. 16-year-old Lily was going to uni. I had been offered a place in the Bachelor of Medical, Molecular and Forensic Science in the Forensic Biology and Toxicology course. So, was my dream fulfilled? Well, yes, but I had already set my next goal, to achieve my first year of university before 2021. Whilst I hadn't needed to complete the Open University's units, they were invaluable as I received credit towards my degree. So in addition to that, I completed another online summer semester unit, as well as a summer school unit on campus, which means I'm now heading into 2021 in my second year of forensics. So what's next, you might ask? Well, I'm loving being on campus and fully exploring uni life, as COVID stopped some of that last year. And I've already met some amazing and supportive people. I've got my sights set on a topic for a PhD, and I've been offered the internship of my dreams with BioBarco, where I'll be part of a team educating young people across WA about biotechnology. And I will continue to be a passionate ambassador for young people finding their groove and changing their environment to suit their needs. I believe that there were two contributing factors to my pathway changing dramatically. The first was living in a household where we were encouraged to explore opportunities in fields of interest. The second, the opportunities I've had to develop networks of people through community involvement. There are over 20 pathways into university. These options, however, are not widely spoken about. But in the current climate of ever-increasing pressure and anxiety, they should be, as there are options for every student to achieve their goals, pursue their passion, and find the environment that suits them, not only within education, but everyday life. You don't have to fit into a box and live up to other people's ideas of what that box looks like. You get to choose your own adventure, and you are the main character of your own story. And if I find myself with nothing else left to do, I might just learn the violin. <laughs> <laughs>